Now, luckily, we have some familiar reports in GA4, like the landing page report. It hasn't changed much, and it still shows you the first page a user lands on when they visit your website. But what has changed is that you can now edit what metrics you see. So check this out. If you have the rights, you should see this little pen icon. From here, you can click on the metric, and in the dropdown, just select a new metric, for example, a conversion rate. Then just hit apply and save, and now you can see exactly what you need. So in this video, I'll show you the six most useful Google Analytics 4 reports. I'll explain how I use them and give you a few practical examples. <laughs> Hello, data people. My name is Robert, and I'm here to help you to understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let me dive a bit deeper into the landing page report. So this is the landing page report, and you can get here by going to reports, then engagement, and landing page. This report basically tells you what is the page uh, visitors visit first during their journey. So this is the, where they land. What I like to do here is to compare pages between each other. So for example, if we take a look here, we see that there's not set, that's the most sessions. This probably just means there's a bug somewhere. But if we look at these other ones, they look more legit. And I already s immediately see that, for example, what's weird here is if you compare it to the other pages, on this page, people only spend 13 seconds or uh, average engagement time per session. So those that engage, it's only 13 seconds. That's pretty low. So I would now, for example, I can grab this URL, copy it, and then there's this search box and place it in here. And then if I hit on enter, it will filter out all the results. So now I should see only uh, results with this, with this URL. Now I can go further. There's this little plus. If I click on it, I can add more or like a secondary dimension. So in this case, I'm going to look for source. I like to look at the source slash medium. And in this case, most people come directly on this page and some of them come through CPC, which is paid advertisements. Now, if you can see, people spend only five seconds of with the paid advertisements. So clearly this is not working. This is an indication I would need to change my strategy. Um, so this is one way to look at it. So another way I use landing page report is to just analyze how well my campaigns are doing. So landing pages are usually useful for your paid advertisements. So for example, we could now look at these pages. So which one is doing the best? Now, if you look at just by looking at the numbers, so you can see here 7,000, this one generated 12,000 with only 3,000 uh, visitors. So that's pretty good. That's probably the best page just right there. But for example, which one is better? This one with $5,000 in revenue or this one with 4,000? Well, the thing is, obviously this provides a bit more revenue, but if you look at the traffic here, you have 10,000 visitors and you have here only 4,000. That means the conversion rate here is much higher than here. So I would now look into, okay, I would look into if I could put more money behind this campaign because it's clearly converting really well instead of this one or this one. This one is doing really badly if you compare revenue to the sessions. So this just gives you a good indication where you should be spending your time and money on. You could also use it not only for paid advertisement, but SEO and uh, affiliates, any type of traffic that you want to separate. It works also here. I usually start with landing page report when I want to find out what's going wrong with this page and how is it comparing to other similar pages. By the way, all this data that you see here is from Google's Merch Shop and anyone can have access to this. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Now, quite often after looking at the landing page report, I want to know where people went next. So they landed on the page, then what's next? What, what did they do after that? For this, we can use the path exploration report and you can get here by just clicking on this explore tab and then you come here and in the template gallery, you just pick path exploration. This report is really advanced, so don't worry if it doesn't make sense from the get go. If you want to learn more about this path exploration and just in general, the free form reports that GA4 comes with, then check out the video that appears somewhere here. If you click on that banner, it takes you to a dedicated and in-depth tutorial. In this video, all we need is actually look at the these reports. So here we have step one. We cannot change the starting point, but what we can do is change the event name to example, to page path. Now it gave me a report, but it still works. So now I can see different pages here. This is great. 
So if you don't see your page, you need to filter out a little bit. So what we can do is here in dimensions, we can click on this plus and in the search field, just search for landing. And you have this landing page and the query string. So let's click on that, click on the import. And now you can see that it appears here. We can now drag this one by clicking on these eight dots and putting it here in the breakdown. Or we could also grab this one and move it to filters since already it's breaking down that one by, by the landing page. But what we can do here is now select match type. In this case, exactly matches and we can enter expressions. For example, let's go back to our landing page report. Let's say I want to look at this page. Where did they go from this page? So I'm going to copy this URL and then just place it in here. And it looks like it is trying to suggest it as well. So that's good and click on apply. And now you see it only shows that path. If you click on this one, you can see that you will see the second step as well. So from this page, a lot of people go to this another page. Others go, I guess this is the main page or maybe home page or something. And you just see where they head from here. If you want to see those people that started here, went to here, what did they do after that? You can see that you can still follow that path. But I think this is super powerful because now you can see where people landed and where did they continue from that page? Because I can imagine as an e-commerce team member, you have certain goals for each page. So for example, let's say I would expect that some product page like this, you would end up in the cart page quite soon, but I don't see a cart here. I'm not sure if the store.html is a cart, so maybe that's where they would end up. If you want to see more here, you can click on it. It should expand more. So super powerful report and it's quite easy to set up even if you don't know how to use the exploration tab in GA4. By the way, data is not created equal and you should be only looking at data that is relevant to your role. That's why I created a cheat sheet which shows you the most important metrics and KPIs specific to different e-commerce roles. You can download it by clicking on the first link in the video description. The third report I like to look at is the acquisition report. It's comparable to the old GA, but it has some new features and default channel groupings. Next, we have the traffic acquisition report. And in this one, you can see it under reports. And then we have acquisitions and traffic acquisition. So why I like this report, it, it gives me a good overview of where is my traffic coming from? Is that SEO, so Google search or Bing search? Is it coming from my advertisements or maybe it's just coming from YouTube? This is the place where you can find that out. Not only it tells you where they came from, but they also tells you how relevant they are and how engaged and how much money it brings to your shop. So in this case, if we look at this web shop, we can see that direct traffic brings the most money. But then we have organic search, for example. So if I was looking at this web shop, I wanted to improve my revenue, I would definitely look at the ones that are bringing the most money now, but also at the ones that are converting the best. Right now, we don't have conversion rate here, so it's a bit hard to see. But for example, if I look at the engagement rate here, I can see that email has the highest engagement rate. Also, you can see email has one of the highest average engagement time per session. So if I improve emails, if I have more people coming from emails, that can just mean that I can generate more revenue from this specific source. I find this report really good if you're trying to figure out where to put in your time. So for example, if one of these sources is working well, then I would just uh, focus on that before going to the other ones. And hey, if these channel groupings confuse you, then check out this video right here where I'll explain the most common default channel groupings in GA4. The next report is essential if you are running an e-commerce shop. Now, honestly, I think GA4 lacks a lot of e-commerce features that the old version used to have, but I hope they will add more features soon. So if you want to know what and how many units you've sold, you need to head to the monetization menu and click on the e-commerce purchases. Next, we have the monetization reports and I'm going to look at the e-commerce purchases and user purchase journey, and they are on the reports and monetization. In this report, you can just see what you've sold the most, which items are selling best and which one is not, which one is getting most views as well and adds to cart. You can filter out here things the same way we already, I already showed you in landing page, but you can change here from item name, for example, to item ID. So for example, you could take a look uh, how well these are selling on mobile phones. So you could either use the secondary dimension or just use the comparison mode 
to uh, add that mobile view, mobile versus desktop view. But the more interesting reports in the monetization is the user purchase journey. I think this is brilliant. We had something similar in the old GA. And if we take a look at this one, this one is like a funnel that tells you how are people going through your website. So right off bat here, you can see that here are all the people that landed on your website. Then here, 36% of those people saw a product. Then out of these 36%, 23% add something to cart. And out of those people, 40% began the checkout. And then out of those people, 43% bought something. So you can see there's a big drop off, especially here between view a product and add to cart. So if I was looking at this specific store, I would definitely look what's going on here because it tells you immediately like we went from 36 to 23 percent so here we're around 40 for all the other steps but here it's 23 so what's going on people are seeing our products but they're just not adding it to cart and then obviously purchasing it later on so from here you can change this dimension to something else honestly these are not very useful here i usually just use it as a device category sometimes maybe country if, if you have multiple countries but i think the most interesting part of this is you can see these steps and this way, it just gives you clues where you have issues. The fifth report is a great way to discover if you have technical issues with the specific browser or device type like mobile or desktop. And the report is called Tech Details. And then we have the Tech Details report and you can get there by going to reports and get here Tech and Tech Details. Usually the Tech is somewhere at the bottom here under User. So here what you can see is how, what devices people are using. The most interesting one could be browser if you're very technical, but I like to look if I change from here to device category and I just find this much more interesting. I usually like to look at the mobile versus desktop and the tablet. I mean, it's a it's a nice to have, but usually these two. For example, if we look at these two on this web shop, you see that the difference is huge. So on desktop, this shop generated $128,000 and on mobile only seven. But then if I compare the users, you can see that there were more users on mobile than desktop. So if I was the owner of the shop, I would just shut down mobile. No, but if we talk about seriously, there's a big problem with the mobile traffic here. And this would be a, a clear indication. Now, I would always expect that desktop would have a higher conversion rate, but you should have more revenue on mobile than only 7,000 because you have so much more traffic. And this just gives you a quick overview of the tech that people are using because uh, web shops are tech products so sometimes you might also discover if you look at certain browsers or at least certain browser versions that you have much lower conversion rate for one browser than the other so for example here for some reason we have much higher engagement rate on chrome than safari now it doesn't really tell us much because it's engagement rate but i bet also that's reflected in the revenue yeah you can see that <laughs> only chrome users are buying merch from google I mean, I guess that makes sense in, in some ways. But anyway, this just gives you another tool to look at your website visitors and a way to identify issues that are more technical. So for example, here we have Android WebView and Samsung Internet with there's no revenue at all, yet they have some traffic. I mean, we're talking about two and here 2000 people on both of them. This might indicate that there's a technical issue on those browsers and I would need to go and actually check that they work on them. So let's take a look at the sixth report, which is the free form report in the exploration tab. It is the most powerful feature of GA4, but you need to create them yourselves from scratch. But it's worth the time to just learn because it's so flexible. And look, you can just drag and drop metrics and dimensions and it works like magic. Since it's so flexible and it's hard to know where to start, I've created this video here that shows you my favorite freeform templates you can copy and use for improving your website and achieving higher revenue.